page 12, the speed boat. Now, every different method book has their own style of presenting the information. It's a, quite an eye-opener for me to do all these method books because I get to see all these styles of information. Now, when I was studying piano in college, piano, I should say, when I was studying piano pedagogy, because I did study, you can actually get a degree in piano teaching, piano pedagogy. I didn't get the degree. I'd, I needed one more semester and I didn't want to stay, so I, I, but I took several classes in pedagogy to learn how to teach. That was before I found out I didn't like teaching. So there, there, I'm getting off here. But the Sham series, they show a lot of these little things around, and maybe if you have a teacher, they go through this and do all this. I don't. I skip all that. For instance, at the top, they show you the key finder. I don't like those charts showing you where the keys are. Now, a lot of books do this. I think you should have you should know where the names of the keys are on the piano already. You're not waiting for here to learn it. You should already know it. It's they show you earlier in the book where that is. And so as far as I'm concerned, you're responsible to know that already. I don't have to point that out. So I don't use these charts at the at the top of the page showing you the keys and where they are on the piano and in the in the music and so forth. Yeah. Then they also show a preparatory drill. I hate preparatory drills. I don't use them. You use them if you want to. I find them a complete waste of time. And I'll explain why later on. Just right now, I, I skipped that. Then in the lower left corner here, they, they're their outside corner, I should say, there's some practice three ways, and that's up to you. Uh, you always need to know the letter names. And it's a good idea to say the letter names as you're playing them, but you don't have to do the rhythm to do letter names. You're just going through, for instance, at the beginning, that first note is a middle C. Hopefully you already know that. I don't have to explain it. It's middle C, and the right hand is going to play the upper staff notes, and the left hand is going to play the lower staff notes. It's the way it works most of the time. There's no rule says that the right hand has to play the notes in the upper staff. Uh-uh. It's just convenience. The Notes in the upper staff are usually higher up on the keyboard, and the right hand is closer to them, so the right hand plays them, and vice versa for the left hand. That's why. So when we see music like this, the first inclination is the right hand will play the treble clef stuff, and the left hand will play the bass clef stuff. And so we'll follow that. That's fine. So it's like in the notes, it's a middle C, we're going to use right hand. Well, I can, I can go through and I can say C, 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 that's the name of the note, and then go to the third measure over and it's C, D, E, C, D, D, and it's up to you to just say the names of the notes. You don't have to worry about the rhythm. Just say the names of the notes so you know these notes. You drill it in. It's repetitious, and that's kind of important for a while until you know them, and after that, don't worry about it anymore. You, you, you know them, so you don't have to keep doing that. Well, the second thing they say is they say count out loud as you play, and that's a little hard to do. You can count to yourself if there's other people in the room, but yeah, counting out loud, I mean, it's important. So once you have the notes, then you go back and do the rhythm, and that's where you start counting. One, two, three, four. Four, four times, you see the four, four at the beginning? I forgot to mention that. It was there all along. <laughs> and then second measure is one, two, three, four. The half note gets two counts, so you can hold it down for the equivalent to two quarter notes. And then the third measure, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then you go on to the second line, etc. So yeah, count it out. Now once you have the rhythm, you don't need to count it anymore because you've got it. The idea of counting it is just to figure it out and make sure you're correct. And once you're pretty sure you're correct, then you can play it without counting. You, you've got it. And then the last one they say is sing words while you play. That's up to you. I ain't singing in these videos. Forget that. I ain't going to sit here and go putt, 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 putt. Uh, uh, singing and playing adds another level of complexity to what you're doing. My suggestion is maybe leave out the singing for now 
Now when you go through the book again, and you should, if you don't have a teacher, you should go through the book at least twice. And then maybe the second time if you want to sing along, go ahead and add that. It's up to you. But other than that, I, I don't mention the singing at all. What I'd like to do here is I'd like to play this with you because we're just, you're just using the right hand on both of these lines. We're going to do both lines. And we've had all this before, so there's nothing new here. And I'd like to play along with you. So the idea is for you to learn this first. So you can stop the video and go learn it or pause it or whatever it takes. And then when you're ready, then come back to the video and play it with me so that you can see if you're playing the same note I am at the same time I am. And that way you can check what you're doing against what I'm doing. You see, if you have a teacher there and you play a wrong note or you don't count correctly, the teacher will tell you. Believe me, they'll tell you who. But if you don't have a teacher there, how do you know? And that's the whole idea of the play with me. Play it with me, and if you play it different than me, you didn't play it correctly. You'll have to figure out what's going on you know, and fix it so you can play it with me. But what I don't want you to do is just copy me because you won't learn it that way. That's, that's, yeah. So learn it first, then play it with me and check what you've done with me. That's the kicker. So I'm going to give us four counts. The counts I give us is based on the time signature. Since there's four counts in a measure, I like to give a, at least a full measure in most cases. Lead in. So it's like I'm going to go one, two, ready, go. That's four counts, right? One, two, ready, go. And then we start playing. There. So let's play this together and check the notes slowly. I'm going to go slow just to make sure you have it. Now this speedboat only uses the right hand so you can leave the left hand on your lap and you're going to put the right hand you're starting with thumb there so go ahead and put your right hand here we call this a C position it's a C position because C is the bottom note in the position and the other fingers are just in the, on the keys next to it a C position so if I say put your hand in C position that's it. And normally it's, it could be any C. But normally it's metal C and if you look at the music you can see which C to use. Too many C's in it. Huh. So go ahead and put your hand on the keyboard in C position. I'll give us four counts. Let's play it together. One, two, ready, go. Three, four, off. 